Now suppose I give you a piece of paper and a ballpoint pen and then I ask you to write your name on it. Now you can do it with me or imagine yourself doing it. This is pretty easy, right? Pretty darn simple. However, now if I ask you to open up Photoshop and open up a brand new document and in that new document, with the help of the brush tool, do the same thing. Write your name but this time with this mouse. Will it be easy? So let's go ahead and try it. Let's take a very simple brush. Even if you go ahead and take a hard round brush and try to write your name right here. See, it is, in my opinion, straight trash. No matter how experienced you are, it's gonna be trash. Well, unless an art gallery hangs it up and yes, I am referring to the banana. This is what brings us to the very first reason as to why a tablet is way better than a mouse. As you can clearly see, it makes more sense to kind of write your name on a piece of paper then do it with a doohickey with your palm on it, right? If you do it with a tablet, the tablet mimics the same thing, the same feel of a pencil or a pen on a piece of paper, right? So if I now try it, let's go ahead and take a very nice brush, maybe Kyle's inking thick and thin, maybe I like that, have a look. The thickness is changing with pressure, isn't that nice? So let's go back and let's try it again. I, I can write anything, right? So this is beautiful, as you can clearly see. Shine your way. This is nice. Drawing with a pen in your hand, whether it's a real pen or even a tablet pen or a pencil, it's gonna be ergonomically easier any day over something like this, which you hold with your palm. You hold the pen with your fingers, thus giving you more control. And also I really love the soft grip of the Wacom Intuos Pro Pen. I've been using it for about two years now, as you can clearly see, a lot of scratch dents and I've dropped it a lot, traveled a lot with it. It just still works. It's, it's pretty durable. Moving on to reason number two, and this my friend is a big one, and that is pressure sensitivity. I want you to have a look at your mouse. In your mouse, you can either keep the button pressed or keep the button not pressed, right? So it is either on or off. It is either one or zero right? However, if you're working with a tablet, right? If you're working with a Wacom or something similar, the pressure is also considered. It's just not on or off. It also matters how much pressure you put on to the tablet. And there's a lot of things that you can control with pressure. For example, the size of the brush, the opacity of the brush, the flow of the brush. Let me show you some examples. So in this brush, as you can see, the size is controlled with the pressure. Now I'm pressing very softly, as you can see, the size is small. As I begin to press a little harder, the size becomes larger. I press really hard and I get a larger size, right? There are other things that you can control with pressure. If you go to window and then here, if you go to brush settings, we can also control opacity and flow with pressure. Let's go to transfer and change the control under the opacity jitter section to pen pressure. Also, you can change the flow to pen pressure, right? Now, the softer I press, the lower the opacity and flow will be. The harder I press, the more opaque it will be. The flow will be higher as well. Minimum, you can control as zero. So when we press very light, it's like nothing. And we can slowly and gradually increase our pressure. As you can see, this looks so realistic, right? This, my friend, is just the tip of the iceberg. Even if you go to a lot of these settings like color dynamics, you can control this with pen pressure, you can control the angle with pen pressure. The options are limitless. So even if you choose a very nice brush, if you, if you go to a special effects brush and if you go to a splatter brush and I am pressing very lightly, if I press harder, the splatter would be larger. There's so much you can do with it. The point to carry home here is that tablet has pen pressure. It is not just on or off, but there's a lot in between that you can do with the pressure in your hand. And you can control a lot of functions or settings with just the pressure. However, with the mouse, it is just on or off. Moving on to reason number three, and this is also very important, and that is speed. Working with a tablet is way faster than working with a mouse. All right, let me give you an example. Can I give you an example? Of course I can. All right, let's go ahead and zoom into this photo. Have a look at this. The hair is masked out. And also, there's a lot of hair that I actually painted. So this is from a tutorial that you can actually watch right here. Have a look at the before image. So this is the original image. Have a look. 
and we cut out the subject from such a difficult background. If I just bring in the mask, put in a black background, first we masked in the hair, we also painted some hair inside of the mask and then on top of that we also painted some hair with some very simple hair brushes. Take a look as I turn these on. Isn't that beautiful? Alright, so if I were asked you to paint five strands of hair with a mouse, how would that be like? So this is a mouse, you would have to press, click, drag the hair, release it. Click, drag the hair, release it. Bring it back. Click, drag the hair, release it. It's going to take you a lot of time. Let me show you. Even if I go here and turn off, let's say, hair two layer, all of these painted areas, if we take the brush and take the hair brush, so I actually had the hair brush, I guess. Have a look. I think the single hair brush. And even if we decrease the size of it, let's create a brand new layer. And then let's start painting. Let's decrease the size to about two pixels. And then start painting with this color. See? It's not going to be accurate. And also it's going to take you a lot of time. Five strands of hair, right? One, two, three, four, five. No matter how fast I go, it's going to be really slow and not accurate. However, if I do it with this, let's increase the size back to four. All right. And now let's draw five strands of hair. One, two, three, four, five. Look how natural this is. Even if I rotate this and try to do it, see, this is way more natural and really, really fast. Look how fast we are going. We can actually zoom in and just draw, start drawing really freely. And as you can see, this is much faster and realistic than doing it with that of the mouse, right? I hope you get the point. Reason number four, and this only applies if you're working with a wireless mouse and not a gaming mouse that comes with a pad or anything like that. With things like this, you need to charge it from time to time. And that is such a pain because you're working and sometimes it just the battery goes down and then you have to charge it. It is a pain, but it's okay. It's not that bad. However, with a Wacom, and this is actually specific to Wacom, you would never have to charge the pen. Never. It works with such a technology that this doesn't require any battery to go. It just, just goes. I don't know how. You might have to look up their website or someplace else, but it never needs a battery. I always keep it connected with my USB, the tablet, but even the pen, even though it's wireless, it doesn't need battery. So you can always have it hooked up and never have to worry about having to charge it. Pretty cool, huh? Now, some of you might say, Unmesh, that is not fair, right? You should have compared it with a wired mouse. But here's the thing. This is something which is indeed wireless. The tablet might not be wireless, but this is. You can move it any which way you want. However, in a wired mouse, the wire does give you a little pull and does get in the way while you're working on your designs. Reason number five, shortcut keys. We all love them. Now, some mice might have a lot of buttons like this one, which you can assign. However, most or all tablets have buttons that you can assign to anything. Even the pen has buttons that you can assign to anything. Also, the Wacom Intuos Pro has a ring that you can assign to a lot of things. So let's say I move on the ring, move my finger on the ring, and it zooms in and zooms out. And when it zooms in, I want to fit the canvas to the screen. I can just simply press this button. I have assigned it that way, right? Even if I want to paint, all I have to do is to just press this button on the pen and drag it to the right to make the brush bigger, drag it to the left to make the brush smaller, and drag it up to make it softer, drag it down to make it harder. See how easier our life becomes in Photoshop with these shortcut keys, even on the pen and the tablet? It's awesome. Reason number six, touch and gestures. Some tablets like the Wacom Intuos Pro have gestures and touch enabled. So when you're not working with the tablet, you can actually turn the touch on. So there's a switch right in there. I don't know if you can see it. There is a switch. You can turn off the touch or turn on the touch with just this switch. Now, once you turn the touch on, and I would recommend to do it while you're not working in Photoshop or doing something else, you can turn this entire tablet to a large trackpad. So let's say I'm browsing, I can just simply scroll in with two fingers, just like a trackpad. And this is a huge one. There are a lot of other gestures that you can explore. Reason number seven, and this might be one of the most important and underrated, not so talked about features, and that is screen mapping. What do I mean by that? 
I want you to understand this concept. If we are working with the mouse, have a look at the cursor. If I keep my mouse here, it starts right there, right? Even if I pick up my mouse and move it 100 kilometers away and there's a long enough wire and keep it there, the cursor will still be at the same place, right? Now, the mouse is here. I pick up the mouse. I keep the mouse here. The cursor is at the same place. Are you understanding? Now, if I move the mouse, it moved a bit. I can actually pick up the mouse, bring it at the same place and move it more to move the cursor further. This is not how a tablet works. With a tablet, the whole area or any area that you determine right in here will represent the screen. So for instance, if I move the pen right in here, it will move to that part of the screen. Even if I pick it up and move it right here, it will go to that part of the screen. So this is screen to screen mapping. You get the point? So this is just like paper, right? In a piece of paper, let me bring it right there. In a piece of paper, if you move the pen right there, the cursor is here. If you move the pen right here, the cursor is here. On a mouse, this is not true. So if the mouse is here, the cursor, have a look, it's in the center. If I pick up the mouse, move the mouse here, it is at the same place. So that is the advantage of a tablet and that is screen to screen mapping. So there you go, seven reasons as to why a tablet is better than a mouse, especially when you're working with Photoshop or any other image creation, image editing or designing application. I hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting this channel on Patreon and helping keep Pix Perfect free for everybody forever. Thanks so much for all your support. Thank you for watching. I will see you guys again in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.